Good evening, good evening, everyone. Once again, we are here in the house of the Lord. This is your Thursday night edition of House of Prayer Evangelistic Church Discipleship. Uh, we welcome you on tonight. We ask that you would uh, make comments in the comment bar. Um, greet your brothers and sisters as they come on. We are just happy to um, be with you once again uh, for this time of sharing. Um, for those who um, have been tuning in on Thursdays, we are dealing with the mindset of a true disciple. And so we're going to carry on in that theme and dealing with different areas uh, for our edification, our building up, our strength, being disciples of the Lord. Once again, I am your host, Elder Ronald Smith, Jr., and I'm just excited. Um, tonight, we're going to have uh, a wonderful treat dealing with um, a very important subject uh, from one of our own dear sisters, and so we're going to introduce her after we pray, but we just want to give you a second to get on and and be ready, have your pencil and your Bible, and your paper ready, because there are some things that we as a body must be aware of. You know, it, it's not that we are not knowledgeable uh, of the Bible and of different aspects of uh, who we are and what we are to do. It is that God brings things before us so that whatever level we are at, we sharpen up, you know, or we, we move to another um, level of whatever the subject is. And so, you know, I'm excited. I'm just, oh, wait, I just don't even want to talk no more. So let's just go into prayer together. Father, we thank you uh, for this night, this Thursday night edition of Discipleship. We come praying for your people tonight, for our hearts to be on fire, desiring to hear things that will help us develop and be in the place that you have appointed. We pray for our mind, we pray for our hearts, we pray for our ears, that we would have ears to hear, and that we would have a heart that will follow closely after you. We pray tonight for our dear sister, Monisha Downs. We ask that you would use her in a mighty way. Touch her mind, her heart, her spirit. Allow her to have clarity as she shares with us the things you have put on her heart. Bless our pastor and evangelist Trina Crawford, their family. Keep us safe is our prayer. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. So, without any further ado, I'm uh, uh, introducing a dear sister, a dear sister, uh, Sister Monisha Downs. Let me just say that she is a passionate Christian woman. You know, any time that she's asked, to do something. She's doing it. You know, and, and I really have a uh, a really um, I don't even know the words to say without being too mushy. But I really have a strong liking for this sister. Because she has characteristics that I want to develop. I'm just going to tell you. And so Without any further ado, we're bringing to uh, our discipleship tonight, Sister Monisha Downs.
Hello, Saints. Um, it's a privilege to be sitting here. Um, Hallelujah. I just really want to first thank Pastor and Elder Smith for trusting me to do this. Um, this was one of the to plug my ears against everything I hear in the world, everything I hear other um, people trying to uh, encourage me with, and just really lay before the throne of God and hear what he has to say. So before I go any further, the first thing I want to do is break down the word intercession because it is the basic foundation that you need to understand. Um, intercession or an intercessor is a person who takes and intercedes or um, intervene on behalf of another, stand in the gap of, so that God's judgment or the enemy's trap will not take and have um, its uh, final objective. And when I say that, um, to intercede <laughs> and to stand before God, and to change his mind, boy, you better be careful. You have to be in a place and in a in a um, in a posture that is reverence of who he is. It is a posture that is not taken lightly, because in the biblical times, in the Bible times. If you stood in the presence of God and you had any sin in you, you was just gone. There was no second chances, nothing. When you went into that inner room of the holies of holies and you had sin in you or you had a, a, a bad intentions, God didn't tolerate it. But thank God we live in a time where he has mercy and grace. So when I think about intercession, um, I want to take and really talk about what God put on my heart, and that is you cannot intercede if there is anything in your heart that is unlike God. You have to have a pure heart to stand before the Lord. And I just want to take and go back to the, the Old Testament where Moses and Aaron and I want to go back to that part, so I'm just going to take you to, uh, no, actually, I'm sorry. I'm, before I do that, I'm going to go to Abraham. Um, Abraham um, really had uh, a relationship with Christ. And at, about, at his age 75, God gave him directions. And when God gave Abraham directions, he then took and began to build this interaction, this relationship with him. And as the relationship began to grow, then there was a point in time in the relationship where um, in Genesis 12 and 7, God appeared before Abram. And then as you go on further in the story, as the relationship builds, then there is this time where he takes and um, he needs God. And Abram takes and has to call upon the name of God um, for help. And that's in Genesis 13 and 4. And so as we look at this relationship, it builds and it gets stronger. And then in Genesis 18, there is this decision that God is about to make about mankind. And we know the story. But I want us to look at it from the perspective of how God built this relationship with Abram. And then in Genesis 18 and 4, Abram begins to have an interchange with God. God is right there in his face. He's talking to God. And he's not, he's not, um, he's not cowarding down. He's not, he's standing. Get this, he's standing before the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And he's taking and negotiating with God before he acts. He's literally taking and asking God, well, Lord, if there's this many, well, hold on, Lord, wait, 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 wait. If there's this many. And so he has this conversation with God and God doesn't move until he finished talking. God doesn't even move. He lets him talk. Abram literally stands between 
God and his decision, and he negotiates. That is one of the most, that's one of the first time we see the word intercession, not so much in the Bible per se, but we see the very act of it. And God literally allows Abraham to do that. And so I want you to think about how that relationship built, that he even had that conversation, that he was even bold enough to take and say, well, wait a minute, wait a minute, God, if it's not 50, 45, well, not, if it's not this, and he had this conversation and God allowed him to speak. You have to think about who Abram was. Because even in um, verse 18 and 17 through 22, he says, I know him. God is saying this. God is saying he knows Abram. So, back to the topic of intercession. We talk about our heart and the things we know. Um, and how I have this board up here and about, um, I want to say a year and a half ago, I got these arrows, these things right here. And I love Robin Hood, and I love how to, uh, he takes in, he uh, uses his arrows, right, to take and help the uh, poor people, and he steals from the king and does all of this, this arrow. And so when I got these arrows, I was like, oh, I can shoot the arrow, right? So me and my kids and some friends had a blast at trying to hit the mark with these arrows. If you ever try to do a bow and arrow, you already know that wasn't as easy as it looked. It, I mean, I tried, we tried, the kids tried. And as this happened, this is the first time God began to speak to me. And he told me on this topic, and he said, that's how your prayers look. The, not just mine personally, but the body as a whole. You're hitting, missing the mark. And I said, what, Lord? What do you mean? And then the scripture came to me. We're praying amiss. And I said, well, God, how are we praying amiss? And God began to deal with me on this. And then when um, Elder Smith asked me to talk about this, all of these memories came back. And, you know, this is the thing about intercession. If you want to intercede, there's a couple of characteristics that you have to have. There's a couple of things that you have to deal with. And the first thing is your heart. You've got to have a heart that is willing to not only be purged and clean, but you have to have a heart that is willing to take in decrease in what it thinks it knows and allow God to speak. Your heart has to know God's heart. Your heart literally, your heart literally has to disappear in his heart for you to be able to take and pray and intercede and be effective. See, we can pray. We can pray all day long. We can pray on different topics. We can do this and do that. And there's different levels of even interceding. There's, you know, the first level, which is the level of, um, you know, where we pray. You know, um, it's like a priest. And, you know, another man of God came up with these. And I, didn't, I don't feel like there's a need to change things every time, reinvent things. I don't believe in all of that because I believe what he um, had was effective. And so there's the, also the second level, which is a prayer warrior. And um, that's one I'm very familiar with. And then there's the third, which is a, pre a prophetic intercessor who um, birth things and give things out. There's these levels. And then the fourth level is the watchman. And these are important levels of intercession. But there's a prerequisite to even get to the first level. And that prerequisite is knowing that the, 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 the standard has to be set, that you have to be willing to know God's heart. You have to know his word. You have to study his word. You have to take time to get to know it so that when you pray, you can pray back to God his own words. Not because he doesn't know it, but because as an intercessor, God's judgment is already proceeding on the earth realm. 
And the only thing that is hindering the wrath of God or even the, the things of the enemy is us, the people of God. But we're not willing to intercede. We're not willing to lay before the Lord and hear his heart. He has a strategic plan for every attack the enemy has. He has a strategic plan to let the people of God take and work around it, to take an escape. But guess what? We don't want to lay before him. So I'm going to go to Matthew 5, 43 and 45. And I'm going there because this is the beginning of intercession that I believe. This is where your heart is tried. Matthews 43 and 45. This is where... God is talking, and he's just done the Sermon on the Mount, and he's saying to the people in 43, Ye have heard that it has been said, Thou have loved thy neighbor, and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, Love your enemy, bless them that curse you, do good unto them that hate you, and pray for them which spitefully use you and persecute you. <laughs> that they may be the children of your father which is in heaven, for he maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good, and he sendeth rain on the just and the unjust. God, why did you take me here? We know we're supposed to do that. <laughs> because we, the body of Christ, we, the disciples of Christ, have somehow played into this mindset that the enemy has put out into the world and we have made our own sisters and brothers our enemies. We've made them our enemies. And we cannot and do not know how to pray for them. I'm talking about us, sisters and brothers, rafting, strife in the body of Christ. Because somehow we've allowed the enemy to take and infiltrate our mind and convince us that my sister is now my enemy. My brother is now my enemy. Lord, I don't know if I want to say this. I don't know if I want to go there. Not with our, our body. Not with our, the people of God. Until we deal with this, we can't stand before God. If we look at Jeremiah, about the 17th, Jeremiah 23, 17, they are um, in a, a place where they say unto them that despise me, the Lord has said, you shall have peace. And oh, hold on, hold on, I'm sorry. I am rushing. And I said I wasn't going to do that tonight. I was going to take my time and make sure I did it right. Jeremiah 23, 17. Um, there, there are people that are acting out and they have hatred for one another. And God is like, look, you see in the Old Testament time and time again how he has shown his wrath because the people of God had deceitful ways and deceitful things in their heart. And he's saying to us that time is over with. And so um, in Jeremiah 6, 17 of uh, 23 and 17 Jeremiah 23 and 17 they say they say still unto them that despise me the Lord has said you shall have peace and he's in this particular part they're talking about prophets okay but just because it's prophet don't get it twisted God's standard is still the same so hear what he's saying here they have said unto them have peace and they have said unto them that walketh um, after the imaginations of his own heart, that no evil shall um, come unto you. <laughs> For who, who has stood in the counsel of the Lord and have perceived and heard his word? Who has marked his word and heard it? See, you got to stand in the counsel of God. So. 
as you continue to think about this relationship Abraham, Abraham had with God, you see how it didn't, he didn't stand in God present on day one when he began to listen to God. No, he had to go through this training process of understanding and obeying. But there's another story, and I'm trying to go through this as quickly as I can, but there's another story in the Bible where there is this situation that's going on and the people of Israel have rebelled against God. And it's in um, Isaiah 59 and 16. And the backdrop pretty much is that the people of God have rebelled. They have turned hardened their heart. They won't listen. It's the heart again. Hear, hear this? Isaiah 59, starting around um, verse 16. Their hearts have turned against God again. And as you go through this whole thing, there's a, um, I'm sorry, y'all. Um, there's, the people are in a position of doing religious things, routine, condition of the heart. And hear me. They pray daily. They fasted. Their activities were routine with God. And so all of a sudden, here is this, this gap that is coming. This gap that is taken and transpiring. God is literally looking at like, who are you praying to? What are you doing? And the basis of it is, is that it was routine. The condition of their heart had become so routine that they could not even understand that God wasn't listening to them. Monicia, what are you rambling on and on? I'm trying to get you guys to understand there's a position that is needed for you to be able to even intercede. In Isaiah 59.2, it tells us, but your iniquities have separated you from God. But wait a minute, in Isaiah 58, it's talking about they're doing things routinely. They're doing what they're supposed to. But guess what? It's the condition of their heart again. So as I go to where God really wants me to, I'm going to do an applicable way for you to clean your heart so that you can intercede. Because this is where it starts at. And if you really want to intercede on the behalf of somebody else, you have to clear your mind. You have to clear your thoughts of what other people are saying, of other people thinking. You have to take and hear what God has to say. Otherwise, it's not going to work. So I asked you, Brother Elder had asked you to get a paper and pen. I want you to begin to just write things down. Write things down. Just whatever it is. And as you write those things down, just let God talk to you. It's not about order or, or priorities or a list. Just begin to write things down. And as you write them down, I have my board here. This is mine. Um, Jaden, can you grab Nana a piece of tissue and bring it to me? As you're um, writing them down, I want you to write them all down. Just take your time and write down the things that God puts on your heart. And um, then I want you to begin to, I have a whiteboard so I get to erase mine. I want you to draw a line through yours though of the things that you truly trust God to deal with you on. And for me, as I begin to do this, there was a topic that ended up being left. And I didn't even realize how deep of an issue it was until God began to deal with me on it. And it's a relationship. And um, I didn't even know I had an odd against him. I didn't know what the problem was. But I knew that God had told me to pray for him. And I really didn't pray. I just... Oh, Lord, help them have a good day, blah, 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 blah. Just a simple prayer. God says, that's not how you pray. That I was like, oh, well, Lord, I don't know how to pray for him. Well, why don't you? Because there's some issues that, boy, you have me pray on and I can go in on. 
When you talk about my marriage, I can go in and pray on that one. I can lay before the Lord. I can cry. I can, I can stand before God and say, God, you know, I messed up in the beginning, but Lord, help me with this and strengthen me in this area and give my husband insight and revelation. See, I can go in. I can start to intercede. No problem. The reason why I'm doing this practical application with you is because we got to start dealing with those issues, those odd, that brother or sister that we really don't want to pray for because that is what God commanded us to do. He commanded us to pray. And pray is another word for intercession. It's just the beginning of a thing. Prayer. When we can begin to pray for that sister that we really have, mm, you know, she wrote me the wrong way. I ain't got nothing else to say to her. Well, wait a minute. Now you've done become an accuser. You're now accusing her. So there's only two, uh, there's one thing that I learned that everything with Christ is black and white. It is either white and pure and simple or it's tainted. We as the body of Christ like to make this gray area. There's no gray area. Interceding, praying is saying that you want to have a pure heart. Lord, okay, I don't know what I did to offend this sister today, but Lord, help me, strengthen me, give me insight and revelation. Help me to keep my mouth closed. If something, somebody says something to me about her, I'm gonna say, hey, you know what? That's my sister in Christ, and I'm gonna keep on moving. I'm not gonna indulge. I'm not gonna engage in that conversation. I'm not gonna be a part of it. Why? Because I need to learn how to intercede. Why? Because I need to take and know the heart of God. Why is intercession needed? Because intercession is the only thing that changes mankind's history. It's the only thing. Only when a man or woman of God intercedes on behalf of another situation or thing does it change. That is when the God's will um, from heaven is released onto the earth realm. When we're able to intercede. And you can't intercede unless your heart is pure. You can't take and do the will of God unless you know his will. You can't take and be effective for the kingdom of God unless you know how to intercede appropriately. So my last thing that I want to bring to light tonight is Esther. And we know the story. We know how she took and went before the king. But I just want to say this as we talk about intercession. Esther stood before the king, man king, in her royal priestly gowns. The only way we can do that in the spiritual is if we have on the garment of purity, righteousness, and holiness. When we stand before the Lord, his kingdom, his throne is filled with majestic things, creatures, splendor. When we enter into that cream, we have to have on this robe of holiness, this robe of righteousness, this robe of purity, so that we can stand in his presence and intercede. The story of Esther, she wasn't foolish. She didn't go in there demanding what she wanted. She didn't take and say, Lord, da 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 da. She intrigued the king. She enticed him with coming to eat with her. She sat in his presence. She dined with him. These are the same qualities that God desires of us that we dine with him, that we sup with him, in that we have a relationship. I'm going to close with that, a relationship with Christ. And I'm going to just say this about intercession. The world is in a crisis that it never should have been in. Because the body of Christ really have a hard time getting it together. There's a shaking in that atmosphere. The Lord said in his word, look at the signs, look at the, 
the, the look at the conditions. And just like the seasons, there's times, they're telling of the times. And don't get me wrong, because there was it was prophesied in the Bible that there would be days like this. There would be plagues, there would be this. But the body of Christ is supposed to be able to stand and walk up on the earth realm with dominion and power. That is what his word says. It doesn't change because of what times we're in. It doesn't change because of the crisis we're in. The word of God is everlasting and true. And so we need to know it so that we're able to pray and stand. Pray and stand. Dear Heavenly Father, I just come before you, Lord. I know that there are those of us who really want to take and go to another level of intercession. Lord, I pray that what is spoken tonight will help them to deal with that issue, that ought in their heart that has displeased you, disfouled you. In your word, you said you sought for a man. You looked to and fro for one that would set up a hedge, that would take and stand in the gap. And the one thing that you desire the most is for someone to stand. Lord, I pray that we begin to be the people of God that you called us to be, to stand and to do your holy will and to do your holy work. And Lord God, do it in a manner that is pleasing unto you. I pray, Lord God, that the word intercessor, cessor, that we would learn to intercede. This church is called a house of prayer, evangelistic church. Prayer is at the essence of it. And prayer begins and leads to intercession. I pray that your people hear what you have said in the mighty name of Jesus. Be blessed and have a good night. Amen.